Hi, Nick Collier here, and this is my shop. Come join me. We'll have some okay, fun. Okay, it's five or six hours later. We're going to take our granite block off and see if that glue is set up. Oh, it's looking good. Ah, nope. Look at that. It's still gooey. Well, we'll leave the granite block off and see if we can get it to set up. Give it a few more hours. And if it doesn't work, because it is liquid nails, and I'm not sure that liquid nails works metal to metal now that I think of it. Uh, if it doesn't work, in the next couple of hours, I'm going to go ahead and take it off and put some JB Weld in there. And JB Weld will hold that. Alright, so we'll be back. Okay, it's early the next morning. I uh, kept an eye on that glue uh, all ap yesterday afternoon and it would not set up. So, uh, liquid nails does not work between aluminum and brass. Uh, so I had to come back in with some... Uh, uh, JB weld and uh, that's got it locked in really good and tight so what we're going to do now is uh, we've got the back side um, done now we need to get the front side figured out and uh, I think what I'm going to do is just drop this on top of there and we've got a margin around the whole thing I think that looks pretty good. And uh, we're just going to come in and scribe our holes. And remember, you know, this is a switch plate. We're not uh, working on any precision project here. So then I'll just scribe the outside perimeter. should give us what we want. I'm thinking that looks pretty good. Now, can you see, yeah you can see a little bit of scribe stuff going on. Now we're gonna rotate up to the uh, table, clean off that table a little bit, looks good now uh, it none of this is really critical uh, it's but it all has to kind of relate to itself so really what I all I need to do is to find this line and follow that line with something so we're gonna get a pointer in there and just figure out generally where our squareness is and then it's got to be cut. The perimeter's got to be cut and the holes have to be cut. So it's all going to be uh, pretty simple. One would hope. So we're going to get a pointer out here. Get rid of our dead.
There we go. All right, so now, and I'm gonna get my cheater glasses to get this thing down as close as possible. Come down till it just about touches. Come in. Till we're right on the line. And crank this thing sideways. is close I can't say more than ten thousands okay we're gonna snug this up a little bit more take it all the way to the end oops Okay, take her all the way back. Just about. That's pretty good. I think we'd be need to go bring this back just a little bit. Okay, and whatever, whatever, however much we're off on that line, it's not going to be a big issue because we're going to square up the entire piece. So now what I want to do is I want to find center. And I think what I can do is just DRO it. And then just come on over to this side. Hit my halfway mark. There's halfway. All right. Now, I believe uh, my bit is a half inch bit. We're going to make sure. <clears throat> 
punch it through there. Uh, actually, that's a little bit big. Check it out. So it's just a smidge small, but I don't think that's going to hurt anything. So, all right. We're ready to rock and roll. <clears throat> So we're just going to come around until we hit center of the hole. And I think, if I remember correctly, I, have some, I don't think they're going to help me. <clears throat> we're just going to come in and Well, hell, I forgot to turn the camera on. So, uh, we got the holes drilled. Uh, now we're going to countersink them. And the, um, the small holes are countersunk at 60 degrees, which is going to be reasonably easy. Whereas the big holes are countersunk at... What is it? 120 degrees so we're gonna start this up and you know what let's just put it in slow mode here across the old one get some kind of a measurement going just a little bit more to go Just a tad more. That's it. Okay, come back to the next one. Got the small holes drilled. Now the bigger ones are going to take a bit more effort. I think I want to blow them out. 
<laughs> Turn on the uh, air. And I think what we need to do is come in with a drill bit and drill down into the aluminum to give us some room to come in with the uh, with the 120 degree um, bit. Otherwise, we're just going to be chewing up, and this thing isn't real sharp on the tip, so it's just going to sit there and grind away. So that won't be too difficult. Um, We'll just get a, oh, I don't know, something under a half inch. And this doesn't really need to be any kind of square, just a relief hole. Well, uh, I didn't drill through deep enough. So rather than take this whole thing apart, I think what I'm going to do is just come in with a small drill bit and a hand drill and go ahead and take this out. Take it down a little further. Except they're all my drills are on another part of the property, so... I guess we're left with putting the jewel chuck back in.
Okay, and so those of you who are worried that I was going to drill through into my table, I was using my little DRO on the um, on the uh, <coughs> quill. So I couldn't go through, or at least I hope I didn't go through. <laughs> oh, take the drill bit out. All right, so we've got our holes countersunk. Now what we need to do is come in and do our perimeter. Now the perimeter is going to be funny because we went with this outer line, but what we really need to do is come into this inner line. And that's going to be a little bit more complicated. Looks like we're at a hundred and ninety thousandths. Some. Where's our line? There it is. Okay, so come in. Drop this down. Let's crank it up. Until we find a line. For some reason I cannot see that line. Now, we want to go 190 thousandths in. Perfect.
Okay, we got all our edges done. I think we're pretty well finished here, except for the finish, which is super polished. So, take it over to the table, sand it down for a while until it looks really good, and then uh, take it into okay, the Okay, so now we've got this thing glued to the aluminum, and we need to get that released. Uh, and the best way I've ever found out, especially with a pretty intense glue, is uh, heat. And JB Weld is definitely... Come on. There we go. So we just come in behind here and warm things up until the glue releases. Fingers crossed. I think we're going to have to get a bigger tip. <clears throat> Alright, let's try it with this one. There it goes. Just like it was planned. It's hot though. No question about that. So we want it to drop onto, let's see, we can probably just swing it out from below. There we go. Let her cool down and I don't know if you can hear it but the long-awaited rain has just started pattering on my roof let's hope that it's a decent rainfall because we haven't had any moisture since so oh, I don't know April maybe May Alright, we're going to just let this cool off. Looks like it's warped a bit, but uh, hopefully when it cools it'll warp back, and if not, we can straighten that out. That's not too big of a deal. In fact, it looks like it's straightening out as we speak. Alright, uh, okay, we'll back. we're back. We've got, uh, and it, uh, the, it took the warp right back out. Now we've got all this uh, JB weld to deal with, but I think I can just put it on the sander and sand that back off. No problem. So, for the moment, actually, you know what? I think the J, sanding the JB weld off is probably the best thing to do right now. So, let's go over there.